Rachel, what should we expect today from Disney and, and over the weekend? And will it be enough to move the needle? It's going to be a big day for Disney fans. Not only is there going to be exclusive looks at new trailers, et cetera, but there's a lot of content that caters to people all over different ages, different families, et cetera. So first of all, the latest Thor movie is coming to Disney Plus as of today. The new live action remake of Pinocchio, a big family hit will be hindering Disney Plus today. But then you're also going to get a lot of content, things like you know, titles from ABC, Dancing with the Stars is going to have some new episodes that are coming on. There's a Frozen 2 sing-along. And then in addition to that, if you're just a Disney fan in general, Disney Plus Day brings you all sorts of deals and look-aheads for other types of products. There's going to be perks for Disney's parks and resorts. Certain uh, Marvel and Star Wars movies are going to be hitting AMC theaters. And so this is really meant to celebrate the Disney ecosystem as much as it is the Disney Plus subscriber, uh, streaming subscriber experience. Because of the slowdown in the economy, more volatility on Wall Street, Sarah, there's been a broader focus on cost cuts, right, and preserving margins in this type of environment. So that's great. They're, they're releasing all this new content. But at the end of the day, will it be enough to, to bring more subscribers to Disney, especially at a time where it is certainly getting more competitive? It's going to be tough, especially if you take a look at where Disney is growing. If you take a look at their last quarter, they, like other streamers, are starting to face saturation here in the U.S. and Canada. And so they're looking abroad for growth. In uh, Disney's case, a lot of that growth continues to come from India, and it's to be seen if that growth will continue now that they're no longer going to have the streaming rights for cricket. I'd say this, you know, in years past, when Disney would have these big investor days or Disney Plus say last year, they would roll out a lot of new content. I mean, you would get tons of details on upcoming Marvel films, release schedules, et cetera. What feels different to me about this Disney Plus Day is that it's a lot more focused on the Disney fan experience across its entire portfolio. And I think that is, to your point, because Disney needs to not only beef up its subscriber totals for Disney Plus, but it needs to beef up the products that continue to bring in revenue for the company. Again, looking at things like parks and resorts, maybe some of its theatrical releases, and it can use that money to help bolster its streaming experience. But for now, to your point again, Wall Street really just wants to see Disney continue to post profit while adding those subscribers on Disney Plus. You know, on the topic of competition, on the topic of competition, Sarah, I want to get your take on Bob Iger speaking at Code last night on the state of the streaming landscape. Listen in. I don't think all streamers are created equal. I do not believe all streamers that are in it today will survive. There are going to be haves and have-nots. Mm -hmm. Well, now that you're not working, can you name some names? I, you know, I can tell you I believe that, that well, Netflix is going to continue to thrive. They could have some issues now, but you know, they're yeah, not going sour, away. But seems Clearly, i a big believer in Disney. Mm -hmm. They've got the IP. They've already proven they can be successful in that business. That's, of course, the former CEO of Disney from 2005 to, to 2020. But there he just said, Sarah, some of these platforms will not survive. Which one do you think it is? Well, I think some of the smaller platforms that don't have the scale clearly are going to have to figure out whether or not they merge with another service or they get bought out. Those, of course, would be right now you have you know, Paramount Plus, and then you have this combination of whatever Discovery Plus and HBO Max might be. You know, they both have some premium content assets. Paramount Plus with soccer and other sports rights. Of course, HBO Max has a premium in terms of original content. I think, though, that Bob Iger is probably right. Disney Plus and Netflix have the clear lead. If you take a look at numbers globally of people who are subscribers to their services, both of those companies have over 220 million people who pay. Of course, Disney's number also includes Hulu and ESPN+. Plus. That's leaps and bounds ahead of its competitors. And so I think it's the two I just mentioned. I also think you have a bunch of other smaller niche services, the Showtimes of the world and the Stars of the world. Obviously, those won't continue to be standalones forever. They're already starting to be bundled with other services. I expect those to continue to get bundled up and rolled up into bigger services that companies think could one day compete as like a third leg to Netflix and Disney.